thankful for everything. When did you decide to go back to school? All uh, right. So, well, okay. So I met my wife. So I, I did start playing music and, and Steve Jones, one of my heroes from Sex Pistols, had been sober for a couple of years and, and Shannon Hoon had just died. Um, and there was this benefit for Shannon Hoon's wife and little brand new daughter, right? And uh, he said, Steve called me. Steve Jones, my hero. I, hey, uh, you want to play a show with me at the at the Viper Room? We're going to raise some money for Steve Jones. All right. Uh, I don't, Steve, I don't know if I can play music. I'm sober. I know you're sober, mate. I've, I've heard. That's why I'm calling you. He goes, you can play. It's going to be okay. And Steve just, Steve Jones telling me it's going to be okay. So we went down and rehearsed with, Steve and John Taylor from Duran Duran and, and Sorum, Matt Sorum, got the set together and I could play at the rehearsal place just fine. I was playing guitar in this thing, right? Not bass, playing guitar. And, but I learned to play guitar. All my guitar riffs were Steve Jones. Like now he's going to see like, and he, he was, I think at that point, used to people like, a, a lot of people cop Steve Jones uh, guitar licks. And uh, so we played this gig, man. I was scared, and but I had, you know, sensei and all this stuff, and in my head I was like, chest up, you know, head up, uh, you know, it's okay. It's like getting in the ring, it's okay. Like you're all right. You've done all the work, and I got on stage and played the show. People said I played better than I ever had. Some people thought I had like plastic surgery and like because I looked so different. You know, all these rumors. Jonesy's like, yeah, people thought you got a facelift and all that. I'm like, oh, what? And um, but I could play and we started playing gigs and, and it was called Neurotic Outsiders. And and um, so now it's like 96. I still hadn't didn't know how to be like with a woman. I didn't. That was kind of far off my radar. I was reading books at home. But working out, I was like a monk, you know. <clears throat> uh, but that this, I was out on this tour, and this guy from Thrasher Magazine, I was in Detroit. He's like, "Hey, man, I know you've been like sober for a couple of years. You know, you, like you had a bad time with with women." He goes, "But I, it's this girl I grew up with. She just moved to L.A. I want to like put you guys on a blind date. Like you guys would be good together. I've known you since '86. I've known her since she was a kid." And and she, okay, she, she's a model, but she's like just moved from Paris, from New York, back to, down to LA, and and like I don't know if I want to get into that world, you know? Like I, I my world is so simple right now because her world, she's like you. She's from Bowling Green, Ohio. She's really she didn't get mixed up in all the cocaine and the modeling or all that stuff. She's really, and he put her on the phone. We got to my room, went up to my room, called her on the phone, and she sounded like one of my sisters. Sounded really calm, really. I talked to her a few times on the phone through the rest of the tour, and she came and picked me up at the Burbank airport. I flew from Phoenix to Burbank. She goes, I'll just pick you up. What, what she didn't tell me, she didn't want me to know where she lived because she thought I was a, you know, I could, a uh, potential creep, right? right? And um, never know, you know, with her, it, it, she was totally right. right. So she picked me up at the airport and it was Susan, it was my wife, you know, and this, this woman, I, this one before TSA and all that. So she met me at the plane and she was all dressed up. I'm wearing like sweatpants and a white feeder and tennis shoes <laughs> and she looks amazing. And I'm like, ah, uh, uh, oh crap. All right. So, um, Hey, listen, can we go to my house just so I can at least change? Like we can't go to dinner with, I, I just thought she was going to pick me up and, we go get some simple thing, but she was dressed to the nines. And she was the sweetest girl on that first date. She was just like the girl I talked to on the phone. And um, she was really nervous. You know, I found out, okay, she was, oh, she's Susan Holmes. Like <laughs> John Taylor, like I knew, because John Taylor from Duran Duran was in our band, Duran Outsiders. He was way more into the fashion world than I ever knew anything about. He's like, man, this girl, he showed me pictures of her. Like, this is my dream girl. And it was Susan. It was Susan. I'm like, I know who you are. I actually know. I've seen pictures of John Taylor's got a big crush. On you. She's like, oh, that's sweet. But she was just this, um, met Susan, and we kind of not been apart since that first date night. So I, we, you know, I kind of had to like tell her like my story, you know, and eventually not that night but over the next couple months you know i said you know i've been married a couple of times and uh i was a to die alcoholic and drug addict 
you know, I was knew I was going to die and I was kind of set for it and it almost happened and it didn't. Now I do. You see, I go to this dojo all the time. That's my thing. And I'm riding this mountain bike. Uh, this is going to be my thing. And by the way, I just got Sonics tickets for like 21 games courtside. I hope you like basketball. Because uh, I'm that that was I mean, that was me making it was being able to get courtside tickets. Did you know? 95, 96 Sonics? Come on. Fuck yeah. Come on. And she that was got, camp and shit. That was camp. Fuck yeah. yeah that was camp. The Rain Man. Camp. Yeah, the Rain Man. Yeah, the glove. Uh, Hersey Hawkins. Hersey Hawkins. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, we. I mean, what a team that was. And uh, 